The Beekeeper's Apprentice by Laurie R. King is a novel that one could call a continuation of the Sherlock Holmes stories, with the introduction of, and through the eyes of, a new character, Mary Russell. This is the spoiler-free part, part of the review, and a warning will be given later, if necessary. This book is part of a series of adventure mysteries that the author is still writing as of 2019, and you can see Laurie King finding her style and the characters' voices in this the first work. I am rereading it after a long period and was surprised to see how far in the past the publication date was. I have enjoyed and read most, but not all, of this series, and a couple of her more dete modern detective works, which were not really to my taste, but they were fine work, fine writing. The style of writing is at first glance a perfect, and at second glance a very good, reproduction of the style of the original Sherlock Holmes story by Conan Doyle. The language use and the characters' conversation sound very similar, and I like that a great deal. Incidentally, Conan Doyle makes an appearance in a non-fiction book that I read recently about the great Houdini, which sadly showed the great writer in a far less flattering light than he would have liked. He turned to spiritualism and became a rather creepy weirdo in his old age, keeping company with even creepier weirdos that could have stepped out of the pages of a Dennis Wheatley novel. Anyway, back to the review. I really liked the style of writing, and the plot pacing was good, though it did skip a beat here and there. It was unlike most of her later books in that the plot appeared far less focused. That's not really a fault, to be honest. The unfolding plot fit together perfectly, I will say, though, that unlike later books in the series, The Beekeeper's Apprentice does in some ways feel more like a series of closely related stories or novellas strung together. But, as stated, that's not really a fault, just a choice of the author. This book is well worth checking out if you like uh, the movies of uh, Basil Rathbone, as Sherlock Holmes, which, to be honest, uh, was the uh, the way I saw it when I read it, or just Sherlock Holmes in general, or mysteries with really strong female leads. It's light on violence and shock and high adventure. So, you know, it's more of a mystery. So, as, as they say, know yourself and know your own tastes. Okay, mild spoilers coming up in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we begin with the framing story, explaining how Laurie King came to be in possession of the memoir that we are about to read. It is in keeping with the spirit of Conan Doyle, being uh, what Dr. Watson's editor, and it's rather a nice touch. Now, since my book is copyrighted 1994, Mary Russell could, uh, could quite conceivably have been alive at the time, which gives you a little pause for thought when you realise how fast time moves. Mary Russell is a 15-year-old orphan when the book opens, and she meets Sherlock Holmes by chance, almost stepping on him as she walks and reads at the same time. He is a uh, rather grumpy, retired but gifted older man, living at a rural cottage and keeping bees. He uh, takes her under his wing, eventually training her as his apprentice, both for her sake and also to stave off the boredom and the depression which Holmes was always prone to when idle. Russell is wealthy. She is low on funds and freedom at the moment, her inheritance being under the control of her aunt, who she omits to mention in the narrative Out of Loathing. She, of course, is far less knowledgeable than Holmes, but is shown as being about as smart and gifted in observation. She has ambitions to go to Oxford and to study theology, a subject that uh, Holmes has no taste for. Concluding the first book, she helps Holmes solve a wartime spy mystery, and has a large story-length mystery of her own. I really enjoyed the case of the monk's ton, and it was uh, very like one of the lighter original stories, and it was good fun. The second part, uh, titled Internship, takes a more serious turn. Here the stakes are the life of a young girl kidnapped. Mary and... Uh, Holmes travel disguised as Gypsy. It's a pretty meaty adventure, and here the author seems to have found her pace. It is a perfect little gem, and it could stand perfectly well as a novella on its own. I think that this is actually my favourite part of the book. It has good pacing, just enough action, and is written so that you feel as if you care about the outcome. The conclusion is such that I really did feel, 
as with the monk's tongue, that it could be a standalone story. The third part, Partnership, opened in 1918. Ralph lives at Oxford, and it is very like the final problem in that Holmes appears asking for help, and the two of them go on the run together, uh, trying to elude a shadowy killer who is targeting all of Holmes's old friends and associates. This was not really a very satisfying part of the book. It, it was passable, but uh, just passable. Uh, there's also a gap in it, and uh, it was filled by uh, this book, and uh, the two, where the uh, two are forced to leave England, and which has become too hot to hold them. The uh, excursus section will tell you some of what happens here, but we are quickly thrust into part four, which speeds to a climax. Now, this section felt as if it was the shortest, with Holmes and Russell solving the mystery, and, uh, or attempting to, and uh, dealing with an invisible foe. Honestly, ugh. this was the weakest part of the book for me. It was not bad, just not nearly as good as what came before. It was redeemed by the postlude, though, which brings back the smile to your face and sets you up for the other great books in the series. Scores out of five. Ease of reading is a three. It was pretty easy to follow for anyone with normal attention span. However, as uh, with the original stories, you must pay attention to detail. Uh, engagement value is uh, three and a half. Most of the time, uh, the reader's interest is held very well, but it's a little patchy in some sections, which is why I dropped this score. And fun value is four. The, uh, the fun parts <laughs> could be a five plus. The patchy parts are maybe a two or three. Uh, it never got really boring or anything, but, uh, you know. Language use, five. You should always strive to read books with good vocabulary, such as this one. Reread value is uh, two or three. Mysteries do not have a ton of reread value to me. Perhaps you're different. That's uh, one of the reasons why I stopped at the last third of this book, and I will never run out of Sherlock Holmes. buy the uh, book, or at least uh, get it out of the library.